All right, welcome to another episode of Key Biscayne Stories. Today we have Manny, or Manuel Rionda, right? Did I say it right? Manuel Eugenio Rionda Jr., actually, Alejandro. Nice um, to see you. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. So Manny here is the creator of Fill a Bag, which if you walk around the beach and you see those white stumps with buckets around it for people to voluntarily pick up trash, Manny is the man behind that project. Um, correct it. I missed one of anything? one of many, one of many people behind it, but uh, yeah, absolutely awesome. But we before we dive into fill a bag, let's get to know you a little bit. I know that I practically you've been in the key for probably more of my entire growing up in the key more, more than 23 years for sure. Well, right. sure, you know, I mean, I mentioned I wanted to talk about you, but you said this is about me, so let's it's talk about, about when I met you. How about yes, that? yeah, yes, yes. So, you met, I, I think you and I go back to. I'll, I'll share what what how I remember it. Um, right. We both lived in the Commodore Club West. Uh -huh. That's that's kind correct. Of where I grew up, and um, it's where you grew up as well. What year did you move there? CCW. Oh man, man, I must have been. I, I don't remember. I was young. Younger than you are now. Significantly. You're still only. You're still a young man. I'm still. Yes, I am. I'm still a young man. But I moved there. I don't remember. It's a good question. All right. Well, I have to ask your father because um, I'm very fond of your father and your mom. Send him my best, please. I will do that. I will do that. Were you born in the key or where were you originally from? I wasn't actually. I was born in a hospital in, uh, in <laughs> Derby, know. Connecticut. Derby, yeah. Connecticut. My parents were uh, Cuban refugees. They left, you know, they left Cuba in 1959. They came up as a, uh, my dad was going to college in uh, upstate New York, Rensselaer, he leaving Cuba in 1959. My my mom was sent out with her sisters to a Sacred Heart in uh, Quebec. Her, the, you know, they were 12, 13, and 14 years old. And so, you know, the family had to start over here in, in the United States. And so my parents met and were married up in, uh, up in Connecticut, and that's where I was born. Um, so uh, I, I started. I started coming to the Key probably from you know the time I was six months old. Uh, we had family that lived here, and we had other family that had ended up in um, in Venezuela. You know, after after New York. Mm. And so we used to come to the Key. You know, my earliest memories are growing up, uh, you know, going to the Silver Sands, and. Um, you know, fishing out there in front and, and sailing and water skiing and, uh, you know, building forts in the dunes. Uh, so, and being with family and, and community. So it was, uh, it was, you know, it goes way back. Didn't, didn't move to the key until I was about 10 years old, actually 11 years old. I moved to the key. My parents got divorced and, um, we did what, you know, all good Cubans were doing in those days, moving to Miami. So we were lucky. We came to Key Biscay and that's the place that we had always known down here. Um, and uh, I was in elementary school here uh, until I went away to boarding school in the early 80s and early mid 80s. I was up in Rhode Island, college in Boston, 10 years out in San Francisco, and then moved back to the Key when I was about 30. So it's a long story in, in just a short version. Hopefully you can edit that a little bit. It, it's perfect. I think, I think it's, it's solid. Do you, do you remember the KFC in the Key? Of course. Yeah, wow. love that. That's one of that my. Was, uh, that was right where, um, I think there's a little bank there right now. It's right. It's yep. right. Be, it's right in front on Crandon, right in front of uh, where the what they call the Greasy Building. They used to call it the Greasy Building. That building offset, off uh, behind behind in, there. In the back. Yeah, like four some story sort of, building. Some sort Bob of like executive Greasy office. It. Bob Greasy was a quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. Obviously, yeah. every you know Hall of Famer, and uh, he owned that building. They called it the Greasy Building. So let's let's talk about Fillerback for a little bit. How what uh, how what inspired this project? Yeah, well, so uh, Fillerback, as you so eloquently stated, is um, it's a beach cleaning beach cleaning initiative. Uh, we set up these wooden posts at beaches that hold reusable bags and buckets, so you can go out and turn an ordinary walk into a meaningful cleanup anytime you go out to the beach. And uh, we started the idea started with, uh, you know, with us kind of going out to the beach and taking a bag and bringing a bag with us and filling a bag of trash and then sharing that on our chats and socials. Um, and we called it fill a bag, you know? And so we started that probably, I don't know, back in like 2015 or something like that, 2014, several years ago. 
and and then we were like, man, imagine if more people would do this. And so we thought, how can we maybe make it easier? Um, and when I say we, I'm, uh, I'm talking about uh, my girlfriend and I, Nancy, Nancy Levitt. She, uh, she and I would, you know, fill a bag. Uh, so, so we had these friends who uh, suggested that we submit our idea to the Miami Foundation's Public Space Challenge. Uh, that's a, that's that's a, a contest that invites people to activate an open space, a public space, to improve a space for more like to create a pocket park or a community garden, uh, you know, a, a reef or whatever it might be. And we submitted our idea with the fill a bag idea. We submitted it and we were one of 20 winners. There were like 500 entries and we, we won. So we won a small grant. And with that grant, we started fill a bag. Uh, we started the first year. We, our goal was to activate five fill a bag stations and we ended up doing over 20. And that was 2019. So that was just, you know, 2020 doesn't even count and it's 2021 now so that was just that that first year um but uh uh so since then it's you know it's just continued to iterate into different things and um we're having a lot of fun with it and the community has really embraced it so thank you so the the proposal that you submitted to to receive this grant was with the stations already in mind so you you developed the concept to what it is now proposed it and that's what got funded Correct. Correct. And so when we, you know, when we proposed it, when we, you know, we had to submit an application and uh, we submitted the application and the first round, we made it past the first round and they were really excited with the idea. So, uh, so they, they, you know, they, I probably, I don't even know, I should, should probably say this, but it was all happening in real time. Um, uh, you know, the Miami foundation, they love the idea and we love them. We, we were really excited to work with them. Um, we had just basically, we had like, we wrote the proposal and then in the time that the application was happening, we were getting it going. And so they called us one day and they said, we love it. You guys are going to make it to the next round. We'd love to send over a newscaster and, you know, and do the story on it so we can promote the, the public space challenge, which is coming up, you know, uh, later that fall. And so um, we're like, all right, great. You know, you want to, you want to come over and see a fill bag station? They're like, yes. And we're like, cool. Well, you know, when do you have in mind? And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, we, I have it ready. I just have to put it in the ground. It wasn't quite, it wasn't quite deployed yet because, you know, I was still working with the village and figuring that out. Um, or I hadn't even asked yet. Uh, and so I'd <laughs> mentioned it, you know, we mentioned it in passing. And, and so everyone uh -huh. was, it's going to be a good idea. So, um, so they're like, yeah, well, we'd love to come and film it. I go, great, when? And they go, he goes, how about four o'clock? And I was like, today? <laughs> so I, I raced over and I, and I you know, I, I grabbed the, the post and I and the, put it in the golf cart and drove down to the beach with the post digger and just put it right in the ground right there out in the sand on the beach. And um, they sent over, you know, a guy from the foundation and also a newscast or just a, a cameraman uh, with a microphone. And we did the interview out there and it was, it was super cool. And basically we were like, we're doing this, you know, you guys want to be part of it. We'd love to, to have your support. And the Miami foundation has been spectacular uh, it, to work with. And of course uh, the Key Biscayne community foundation as well, um, which is the organization that we operate under. So, you know, we're, uh, we're just small potatoes. Yeah. So, but you're getting a lot of buy-in and support as well, right? You yeah. Well, we have, uh, we have like over 40 fill -a bag stations spread throughout the country. Um, just, just this last week, uh, a, a kid from Newport, Rhode Island, actually he's from Canada. His name is Atlas, Atlas. Um, I won't even give his last name, but because he's moving to the key, his family's moving to the key. Uh, great story. You know, they, I, I get a, an email or, or I guess it was an email from somebody in Rhode Island. They're like, yeah, I, I love this idea. I'd love to put a fill -a bag station at my favorite beach in Newport, Rhode Island. I was like, great, you know, that's how it happens, right? That's how people reach out and how we make it happen. And so I said, great, let's, um, the first step is we set up a Zoom call and I'll take you through a DIY process, you know, do it yourself. And so, and how we can support you in doing it. And he said, okay, he wrote back and he goes, okay, um, I, I can do the Zoom. I'm only 11 years old, is that okay? <laughs> and I was like, that's great, man. I mean, I like, have you asked your parents? 
if you've asked your parents and they can join you on the Zoom, absolutely, let's do it. So his parents obviously were incredibly supportive, uh, amazing family. They vacationed in Key Biscayne and they fell in love with it and they saw Philabag. And so they were on the beach one day and they saw, you know, they did it. And so that's how they came to know it. And they love Key Biscayne so much that they're actually moving here in August. So looking forward to that. New, new people on the key. Thanks to Philabag. <laughs> <laughs> It cool man. First one cool man. I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I definitely I've seen my friends do it. You know, I have to I have to admit I have to grab a a, a bag one of these days and do it myself to do the experience. But uh, should it be called fill a bucket? Uh yeah, actually that's a great idea. You should try that. You should go with that. Uh start start a fill a bucket. No, 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 the fill a bag is has buckets hanging around it. Yeah, I know. So I'll tell you how that iterated if you'd like to hear, if your listeners would let you think your listeners would like to hear it. Give it to me. Give it to me. All right, because it's a great question. Um, yeah. So when we went when we first started going out, uh, we would bring a bag with us, not a bucket, and it wasn't just a bag. It was like a Win Dixie bag, you know, like a plastic bag, right? And this is like in you know 2013, 2014, uh, 2015, and we would we would think to our, we thought to ourselves what if we could set up a post here where we had like a box set a box or something and just like a dog poop station mm -hmm. and we'll just stuff that box with Win Dixie bags so we'll just go to Win Dixie and you know get all our bags i've got a thousand of them under my sink and we will um, and we'll you know put it there so people could fill a bag because that's what we were filling every day we thought we were repurposing these Win Dixie bags which we had tons of and then and then we realized, we're like, wait a second, man. There shouldn't even be Winn-Dixie plastic bags. You know, I like, we're going to bring those to the beach. So at that moment, fill a bag could have taken a drastically different direction, right? Uh, but the name was still catchy. We had already been doing yeah. the name for years. We'd already been hashtagging the name for many years, you know? And and um, then we, start, we, we, we knew that we used buckets ourselves when once we really got into it, we just started using buckets. So we tried burlap bags. They're nasty. You know what burlap is, right? Like those potato sacks. They get moldy. They're no no fun. Oh, the ones that, um, that they are for like waterproof? No, no. They're brown burlap bags. Like you use them in gardening. Uh, and then we oh, tried yeah. these other bags, which are the orange bags, the mesh, orange mesh bags. You know, the ones that you get by your oranges in? Thinking yes. that would be cool because it'd be, you know, be able to stand the weather. And first of all, tiny micro little plastics fall, fall through it and the, those would rip. So we started using buckets. We used buckets ourselves and we're like, let's just put buckets on there. And, you know, I think it worked out, but so, we didn't change the name. So I hope you like fill a bag. I, I, I like fill a bag. It's very right. catchy. I'll, I got a sticker for you, but you got to get out there and fill a bag with me. I will. I will do that. I will do or that. yourself. Send me the selfie. I'll, I'll, I'll post it up. That's how it all began. You got it. It's, it's it's my keeps game story promise to you that I will. You know what? There. Let's do this. Um, you seem like a sporty kind of guy, right? I've seen you out there. Are you paddleboard, right? Paddleboarded before. Would you be willing to try? I'm down. I'm down. I'm down to try we'll, paddleboarding. We'll kill two birds with one stone. We'll go for a paddle cleanup in the mangroves. Okay. I'm down. Okay. I mean, you don't have to just say it because we're on the air now. No, 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 no. Like, it, it, so, it, actually sounds, it, it actually sounds nice. And, if, and, and you can bring a guest if you want as well. So if you feel like you need somebody for some you know, more support or whatever, you can bring somebody too. And mm -hmm. we've got you covered. We have the paddleboard for you, um, everything. You'll be gloves. Uh, you'll be good. You, do you find – so this would be through the mangroves? Do you see, do you we, find a lot of trash there? Is a lot of trash that gets stuck oh, in there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we do. So I mentioned, you know, Philabag is, is iterated into many things. It's not just the stations out there. Uh, we have a, a, like a educational program. Uh, we have a mentoring program with interns, local, local high school uh, students. Um, we do uh, pod cleanups. We do corporate cleanups. Um, group cleanups uh, for, you know, in specific groups. We call them pods. Um, we, and we also do mangrove cleanups. Uh, we did a mangrove cleanup at the Kibiskan Yacht Club. The Kibiskan Yacht Club has been a, a great supporter of Philabag. 
Uh, we did it last year when COVID was, we were in the COVID time, right? And, um, you know, you couldn't have any sort of events, right? You couldn't have more people gathering together, and, you know, whatever. And so um, the Seabells at the Yacht Club call and they're like, Manny, we're dying to do something. We need to do something. They're like the social committee, you know? So, um, so like, can we do some kind of paddle or a or fillabag thing? And it was great because we did it because, and the beauty of it was we say at Fillabag, you know, we've been social distancing since 2015. You know, like it's the ultimate sort of individual type of uh, experience. But um, we, we went into the mangroves and we did it again this year uh, with them. The other day we pulled out a rope that weighed 900 pounds. One, one ball of rope, 900 pounds. I think I saw that on your social media. Did you post yeah, that? Yeah, you saw that. Yeah. I did. I did. You can check like... out. You can follow us at fill a bag on Instagram. Awesome. And uh, all, all kinds of plastic and, you know, just debris in the mangroves. You know, the, the mangroves are like, they're like a, a sponge. They just absorbs every, absorb everything. And once things get caught up in there, um, it's hard for them to get out. So going back to, to what you mentioned about your initiatives, you, we have educational programs, corporate programs. Can you expand a little bit on, on those programs? Sure, sure. Yeah. So when we started fill a bag, we did it under the MVP model, minimal viable product. We're going to put something out there, these wooden posts with buckets and no instructions really, uh, and just see how people interface with it yeah. and allow it to evolve in, in an organic way. And we knew that we would be doing, uh, we would be doing that not just here, but in communities, hopefully around the region, around the state, around the country, and maybe even around the world. And we knew that we weren't going to be in all those places, obviously, right? We're here on the key. So uh, we were just waiting to see how it would evolve, how Philabag would evolve according to the resources and the creativity of the community behind it. And so we know we're the community behind it here, right? So mm -hmm. how did we want to see it iterate? Um, one thing that we found right away is that kids love it. Kids absolutely love it. And it's a great connector between generations, you know, you see uh, children and their parents doing it and grandparents uh, doing it together. Um, and so we, we really love that aspect of it. So we thought, you know, how can we get more people of different generations involved? And uh, one thing that we've done this year is uh, started a program called Fab Campers, Fab for Philabag, Fab Campers. And basically uh, what we do is we, pro we provide cleanups for local area, pods and they're they're put on by uh the fillabag team which is made up of uh high school ju rising juniors rising seniors ri rising college freshmen so these kids would come to cleanups and they'd want to get involved and uh, at the same time they're getting ready you know for the college application process and to you know kind of start building their own stories and the environment, environmental, you know, awareness is a big thing. Obviously, right now you can't open a, a news feed or a social thread without seeing it. So the kids were really into it. So we have this Fab Camper program, uh, which is providing these these pod cleanups. And the pod cleanups came prior uh, during at the end of COVID, uh, when we, you know, in partnership with the Key Biscayne Community Foundation, we put out a program, and it was called Clean Up KB. And it was, you know, have you had it with Zoom meetings and online school? This is like, you know, September 2020. Uh, call up Philabag and schedule an eco-adventure with your pod, your homeschool pod, your friends and family pod, your corporate pod, whoever you've been isolating with, you know, over COVID. And so, you know, the groups were of 10 people and then eventually, you know, 15 and then eventually 20 and then eventually opened up. Uh, but it was incredible. Uh, and, and we had, you know, so we, that's just an example of how one thing led from another thing, which came from something else. Um, yeah. So if, if, uh, anyone, I don't know when this show is airing or not, it doesn't really matter. We're going to always probably do it. The, the, the fab camper program is here to stay because we have a stable of like 12, uh, local kids from, you know, every high school, Mast, Gables, Ransom, Gulliver, uh, you know, Columbus, Belen, every, every school is, is represented. Uh, and so that's going to keep on going. So if you're interested in that, you can just follow us on Instagram and 
go to our you know homepage and you can sign up for a Fab Camper program. Thank you. I will definitely share your information in the show notes so people can have access to it right away. Thank you, sir. I I want to I want to want to talk about Keep Skiing. I want to Okay. I when I know we were talking about your your upbringings from back in the day even though you're still a young man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um so what is your favorite part about Keep Skiing? Oh man. Well, um that's uh yeah, that's a that's a man, that's a big question. Uh, there's a lot oh, of things a separate I really show, love. Huh? Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah, there's a lot of things I love about the key, and they're probably things that you know I have in common with other people, other you know that they love about the key. Um, we are obviously you know aesthetically spectacular. I mean, look at this for your viewers. I don't know if you thought that this was a a back screen or something, but this is actually this is what I love about the key. Check it out. At first, at first, check it out. This yeah. is a real background. That's a real background. <laughs> so um, it is. It is very uh, nice. The aesthetics, of the, the the nature, and the beauty of this place is spectacular. Um, I, I love that we are uh, a community in so many different ways. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, for sure. But it's a community. Uh, we are, you know, obviously right over the bridge to Miami, which is incredible to have that kind of proximity to such a metropolitan center, an international center. Um, yeah, so digging into each of those things, you know, I, I'd probably have to start with with uh, with community. Uh, this is a place where um, you can really you can really get your nippa on, you know, get your nippa on. What is nippa? You know, nip nippa nippa non income producing activity. Non you can have a lot of interests here, and you know, uh, spend time doing things that you're passionate about and that you love. Whether it's going to play beach volleyball or you know, taking a bike ride or uh, going out on the boat with some friends or, and one thing that I always loved about the key, not only just growing up here, but also more raising a family here is that the events and the activities are all multi-generational, you know? So you, your kids get to be part of your life, um, you know, to a, to a certain point until it's ditch city, you know, it's, it's eventually coming. And once a teenager doesn't want to have anything to do with their kids, maybe so or not as much, but, um, with their parents rather. Uh, but, um, yeah, so uh, I, I, and, and within those, within those different community elements and community activities and community groups, they're all very, um, incestuous. Like there's, there's not very much set, separation like half a degree of separation between sort of one group and another and everyone's you, you can you know I, I like to on the, on the same token you know it could be clicky and it could be groups that just stick together but I think there's plenty of free agents out there that go between all the different groups and I, I love that about the key that's a great answer uh, so I know that we're running out of time and I have one more question for you uh, what is a perfect weekend for Manny the Philip Philibag guy look like. We didn't talk about Chico's Paddle Club, so oh you know, my god, no, please. That's it's, okay. That's no, okay. Uh, I'll be the Philibag guy today too. But we're also the Chico, we got the Chico's Paddle Club for sure. Please Chico's tell us about Chico. Where, where is Chico? Hey, what Chico, Chiquito. He can't hear you. You're my earbuds. Oh, that's right. Alejandro says hi, Chico. He can't. Right. He can barely hear me. No, we. Um, we I'm sorry. Yeah. We have to talk about Chico. Let's pause my my Kiwi's King question and tell us about Chico. How is Chico? Well, doing? yeah, Chico is. Um, uh, you know, Alejandro. I got to tell you, this is the first time that I've spoken with somebody for 36 minutes, and they haven't mentioned Chico yet or asked me how Chico was doing. But that's all right. He can't hear you. You're in my ears. You won't um, get he can barely hear me either. He, uh, but uh, yeah, Chico's Chico's a legend out here on the key for sure. He's uh, the island dog. Um, many years, he's fourteen now. So in case anyone's asking, we went to the vet today. He, did, he went for his checkup today. Uh, the vet's like, man, his breath stinks, but he's doing great. <laughs> you know. So I was like, okay, well there you go. That's 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 all right. Um, yeah, he's doing well. Chico has Chico has a paddle club named after him. Chico's Paddle Club. It's kind of famous. Uh, you will be joining Chico's Paddle Club when you come out and go for that clean mangrove cleanup with me. Don't worry, you'll be in on that. Uh, so uh, yeah, Chico's Paddle Club, it started several years ago, probably 
10, 12 years ago, there's a chat, you know, where you can be on the Chico's Paddle Club chat, WhatsApp chat. Uh, and basically we would just, st we started paddleboarding. Chico would go, I'd go with Chico. It was a couple other guys, Rudy and Jose, uh, Rudy Sanchez and, and uh, Rudy, Rudy Dumashan and, and Jose Sanchez. Shout out to those guys, OGs from Chico's Paddle Club. We would just go out for a paddle and people would see it and be like, wow, that looks so cool. You know, you're, you're out there paddling and there's million dollar yachts and everyone's staring at the Jack Russell on the front of a paddleboard, you know, like that was just pure joy. So we're like, we got to get more people out here to do this. It was the same as fill bag. You know, we just got to get more people involved, connect, right. Connect. Uh, that's what I love the most about the key, by the way, is ability to connect with people and places and things and activities. That's, that's what I was trying to get at. Um, so we started Chico's paddle club and people were like, man, I'd love to do it, but I don't have a board. I was like, I was going to say the only excuse you can, the only thing that you excuse you can't give me is that you don't have a board. Give me any other excuse. Cause I've got a board for you. And they're like, okay, I guess I don't have any other excuses. So we'd set up the day and time. We'd go for a paddle. Welcome to Chico's paddle club. And from there it grew to, I think after like, after like five years, I stopped counting. There were like almost 500 members of Chico's paddle club. And that was five years ago, you know, Amazing. Uh, all you had to do was be part of Chico to be part of Chico's paddle club is to come out on the paddle. And what the way, the way that I would, some days I had to find like 10 boards, you know? And so I was like, I don't have 10 boards. So we started a network here on the key of Chico's paddle club, where if you have a board, um, you're willing to lend it if it's accessible from your house. So we would literally be pulling up in golf carts, a chain of golf carts and running into people's side yards and shuttling boards out, you know, and putting them on cards and then go to the next house. And, and that's the way it worked. And then we, you know, we'd all go for an incredible paddle. It was always uh, spectacular weather. We go on the calm, calm, flat, calm days. And uh, we paddle out in front, either up to Crandon or down to the lighthouse, or we paddle on the other side, you know, back behind the Yacht Club and Mashta and uh, State Park and all that area, depending on which way the wind's blowing, right? So, um, yeah, so Chico's Paddle Club is really more, I think more people know Chico's Paddle Club than Philibag, to be honest with you. And that's, and that's fine and how it should be. So now I've always seen Chico following you around and, and always steady on the golf cart. Was he ready to be steady on the paddle because of the training or was, was it a challenge or, or Chico? Oh, obviously he, he's, yeah, a, no, he's, he's a natural guy. He, I mean, you, so you listed, you, you listed um, the paddleboard, you listed the golf cart, you know, the boat, you know, like on the boat, he jumps up on the gunnel and runs along the, the sides or the bike. He has a little bike that he rides on. Never rode a skateboard. Um, but uh, yeah, so I didn't, I can't take any credit for that. He was just basically sticking around and doing it. One time I have to admit that, you know, we were out fishing one night and he would come out with us. He was always out and about. He, he's not so much anymore, but he's good. Uh, we were out tarpon fishing and somebody somebody like kicked over uh, a tequila you know like a, a, a full cup of tequila and it got down there and I, and I, I think I think Chico got into it uh, a little bit and he actually fell in the water that night I, I'm gonna blame it on the tequila I'm not gonna um, but he did fall in the water that night and we had to pull him out uh, but he always wore a vest so he's easy to pull right out and he did fall off the cart one time that wasn't my fault uh, I won't even tell you the story because Somebody will feel awful about it, but somebody was just like playing around on the street, and I and I turned like that, and Chico went flying out, and the person saw it. It was like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, but he's 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 um he's great, man. He's sleeping well and pooping solid still. Fourteen. That's important. Yeah, <laughs> that's very important. So now now going back to my my final question of what is a perfect week? Oh, a perfect for day. You? A perfect day. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would, it would have to start with, it would have to start with, um, so a perfect day is a weekend day, right? You're saying it's a Saturday. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Friday or it's a the Saturday, Sunday, it's a combination of the weekend. Oh, the whole weekend. Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, the yeah. whole weekend. So I, I give you a lot of free that's, that's, canvas. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I will, I will describe um, a perfect day for you. All right. Cause the weekend could go on forever and the, and the weekend one might be just like three of these in a row. So consider three of these in a row. Right. Got it. Wake up, um, wake up, have, you know, make nice coffee, 
fresh, ready to go. It's flat, flat, dead calm out in front. The ocean side is dead, dead calm. We already knew that was coming. So we blasted out on the Chico's Paddle Club chat that it's, there's a paddle happening tomorrow. Um, sunrise paddle for the early people that want to do it. Uh, and let me say 7.30, 7.30 paddle, not too early, right? Not too, not, not like 6.30 sunrise. And we get out there, big group shows up, um, dogs, tons of dogs. They're on the boards too. Uh, kids, parents, you know, first timers, people who'd never done it, people that were, that had been doing it. Um, we might even have like a little setup uh, there for later. We'll come back to that. So we launched the paddle boards and we head south. And it's one of those crystal clear days where, you know, the water in Key Biscayne, when you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, that is incredible. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Everybody that has been out there on, you know, no, on the day, you know what I'm talking about. So as we're paddling, all of a sudden we start seeing like bubbles, burbujas coming up and they look like elephant prints. Right. And they're just moving slowly and we're paddling. And then as we start catching up on them, we realize that it's a whole herd of, of an aggregation an aggregation of manatees. They're just everywhere. And the water is so crystal clear that you could see them, you know, clearly. Nice, so nice. we paddle by that and we enjoy that. It's remarkable. Um, along the way, we also see, you know, rays and turtle. Uh, we see some porp. Uh, we don't see the porpoise yet, but we're going to see him on the way back. We paddle down. Uh, we all of a sudden we look down and we see a huge ball of rope. So we're going to have to get that. We pull up, team effort, we go down, we pull up this giant ball of rope, throw it on, on the front of someone's board. We're getting that thing out of there because I mean, the manatees are swimming right there. And so we go down to the lighthouse. Um, behind the lighthouse, there's a little area where you can tuck into, behind the breakwater, rather. And there's a beautiful little beach there. Probably shouldn't even say this because uh, we don't want to blow it up. But um, it's just on this perfect day. It was just perfect. It's never like this. It's just on this day, it's perfect. And so we enjoy some time there. Some of us paddle out a little further towards Stiltsville. There's a sandbar there. And now you're looking, you're in the middle of the bay and you're looking at the lighthouse up to the key. It's beautiful. Paddle back. On the way back, we get escorted by uh, a pod of dolphin. Amazing. They, like, they're right next to us. Everybody's seeing them. It's incredible. We get back to our spot where the golf carts are. And uh, we had we had brought over we had brought it was somebody's birthday some a reason for celebration for somebody it was something that was somebody somebody a special moment for somebody so we we brought a nice you know a, a plastic free bloody mary uh, gear all you know the food the olives the uh, bacon maybe you know the hot stuff the mix ice coolers all set reusable cups. So we all hang out there at that point of the beach. No one's in a hurry. We hang out. It's beautiful. Have a couple of bloodies and toast to that person. And then, you know, we look at our watch and it's like, it's only 1030. You know? So it's like, we're still in the morning. So go home. Um, actually, on the, way, on the way out of there, I would go by the farmer's market and go, go over to, you know, pick your food. For me, I'd go over there to, to Lily's, to Lily's Guac and get some tacos, um, delicious, and uh, say hi, you know, more community people and all that. Maybe do a little produce shop, go home, shower up, probably take a nap because it's hot. Especially and after, after all that morning activity. After all that, for sure. So take a nap and then, you know, kind of come back up at like five, five o'clock or something, five, six o'clock. Probably, you know, go meet up with some friends. Uh, at, come over to my girlfriend's house, um, hang out a little bit here with the dogs. And then the two of us will hop in the cart and maybe go listen to some live music on the island. Maybe uh, go for a walk on the beach. Uh, maybe it's turtle season and we just kind of want to sneak out and take a little walk. Maybe go over to, um, to the Ritz or to Dune or something, or you know, maybe go to Cape Florida to the state park uh, and take a bike ride through there. You pick it, you know, pick any one of those. And that perfect day can just be, you know, plug and play. Like, what do you want to do? So, um, and then, yeah, then, you know, early to bed and, and get up and do it again tomorrow. It sounds extremely relaxing the way you described it. I hope. <laughs> 
So thank you very much, Manny, for taking the time to share your story, your background, your history, the Fill It Back Project, wonderful initiative. So thank you for your contribution to our community and, uh, and for taking the time joining us. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Alejandro. I appreciate it. And I've, I've listened to a few of your podcasts. You know, I didn't just come on here. Thank you. But I do appreciate you sending me. I'm just kidding. Of course, I was coming on from the very beginning. But uh, I listened to a few of them and I, I, I really liked it. You know, I was out actually doing one of those things that I just mentioned, you know, whatever it was, I was out there and, and, and I listened to it. You know, it's great. Listen to it on the beach. And it's funny because, you know, I was listening to you speak with somebody and I could totally relate to having that experience almost in that moment, you know, being on the key and doing one of these things, uh, one of these t types of activities or, or exercises that we can do out here. So I hope that, um, I hope that you keep continued success with your podcast. Thanks Thank for having you. me. Thank you. Feedback is always nice. It's, it's, it's warm for the heart. <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, we'll stay in touch and we'll, we'll get out there. We'll get out there soon. I can't wait. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.